360 years ago, Henry Oldenburg, the secretary of the Royal Society, decided to publish a periodical to circulate the latest information sent by correspondents from around the world. He called it the Philosophical Transactions. This is the original volume of Philosophical Transactions, the, essentially the first scientific journal. From an editor-driven periodical circulating news about all branches of natural philosophy, the Transactions became a journal publishing for original scientific research. In 1832, it introduced systematic peer review of papers. Peer review, again, which was pioneered by the Royal Society, is absolutely vital now for the integrity of scientific publishing. And here we have the very original first peer review of scientific articles. It became one of the most prestigious scientific journals in the English-speaking world. Copies were circulated to universities and research institutions around the globe. Well, here I'm looking at Michael Faraday's original notes. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, Faraday, one of the most prolific and creative of scientific geniuses. This is Thylaca Leo Carnifex by Richard Owen. And it's a description of the skull of this fossil marsupial. You can see these uh, very, very detailed description of, of all the elements, but also these absolutely fantastic drawings. The publishing landscape has changed immensely over time, particularly since the digital revolution and the rise of open access. I think it's hard to um, overestimate how much the digital revolution and invention of the internet changed how we publish papers. It changed the way in which we read publications. I don't think I've been into the library for probably about 20 years. It's made it easier to submit. It's made it easier to search. It's also made it easier to have a dialogue. As a young person and a young researcher, that felt liberating. It made certain opportunities available everywhere. In his letter to the philosophical transaction that we see here, the shape of software was determined. Even though computer science came much later, the seeds were sown by Mr. Babbage. Well, open access has been really critical, I think, for increasing the ability of people to access new research and, importantly, to access data. Remove all of the bare walls, barriers, subscriptions, means you have a lot of voices, like global voices, that can weigh in and, and, and say, if this is scientifically credible, why, why not? And having that multitude of, of different ideas just coming together, I, I think that is really beneficial. The replication of science is absolutely at the foundation of the scientific method. So if papers cannot be reproduced, that means they're effectively not good science. Now, not every paper is rerun, of course, but the ability to do that is critical. You will have an article, you will have the code, you can replicate things immediately, you can see the flaws. And the more data we can get and accessible, the more crucial criterion of reproducibility can be met. AI it is being deployed and it's being used a lot in science now and it can help you with designing an experiment. It can help you with analyzing the data, visualizing the data. People will use tools like ChatGPT helping them write papers. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing um, as long as they're used intelligently and well. Authors still rely on publishers to curate and disseminate their work just as they did back in 1665. That fundamental process of rigorous peer review, I think will always be required. I think increasingly as, as more papers get published, as science becomes more global, philosophical transactions will always be really important for science. That long standing reputation of being a home for really excellent, groundbreaking science is unparalleled. Over the last few decades, we have seen that scientists from around the world are increasingly represented in our journals. And that is something that will continue and that we really would like to see continue to make sure that we are actually representing the best science and the best scientists in the world.